Thank you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. You got it. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This is what we're going to do this year, okay? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord to be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us ignore. Brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. So, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born, just wait a minute, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered dead and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace for eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord.
O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, made through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that they, that he had to rise from the dead. The gospel of the Lord. Amen. Students in religious education that still have their ticket number 145, you're welcome to bring it over now. This is your last call, okay? Ticket 145. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy Easter to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let's give a big hand to our, to our students. That's great. That is great. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. Or as young people say, right? The Lord is risen. No cab, right? Then you guys say that. I was just told that you guys say that. I'm like, what's that? No cab. No kidding. The Lord is risen, young people. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. No cab, right? It sounds cool, right? Well, happy Easter. It's a combination. Maybe young people should also say, no cap. <laughs> this uh, Easter season made me remember one time about 15 years ago that I was a recently ordained priest, and that was living in San Antonio. And I was called to go to El Paso to see one of my good friends, Leonor Sita. Uh, she was uh, about to die in the... And she um, had requested to see me, and uh, I was going to celebrate the funeral mass as well. So I took my little car, and I went from San Antonio, drove away, and then after about 200 miles, you know that when you get into the desert, you lose track of miles, and there's nothing there to see. And so all of a sudden, I see that the gas... Um, pointer was going down. I'm like, uh, darn it, I forgot to gas this tank. So anyway, and then I put on the GPS, where is the nearest station? They said 150 miles. I said, no cap. <laughs> and so I started praying very hard. And then I called my friends, and they said, you want to slow down, because if you keep pushing the gas, getting, trying to get there fast, you're going to consume the gas, and you don't know where the next station will be. I said, they say 150 miles. He said, no, but there are smaller towns. There is nothing. This is Texas. There is nothing here in West Texas. And so just when, the, when things could not get worse, the thing went down to the empty, to the red, and you will not believe me. I prayed even faster and harder and stronger. I said, Lord Jesus, it was in the middle of the day. It was a desert. I didn't want to be all the way up there stranded. No water, no food, because I was going to go to El Paso to visit with my friends. They were going to pay my dinner. You know how friends are with priests. So the harder I pray, the slower the car would go. And at some point, I figured like something was up, like one gas station was up there. And then you will not believe this because nobody believes me until I, you, if you are with me in the passenger seat, you will believe what I am saying. I drove by and into the gas station and just about two feet away from the pump, that's when the car stopped. And I felt so good. I, at least I said, at least I made it. At least I made it. See, Easter is, for many of us, it's like that. Things get complicated in life, but we have to keep driving, right? Even if we slow down, we know that we're going to get to our destination. And Easter is that destination when we replug and re-energize. Easter is that space in life, is that season of our lives, of our Christian lives, when we just replug, when we fill up the tank. Amen. Because I'm saying this because my friend still died. At least I got to see her one more time. She was about 81, 82 years old. And then I got to see her one more time. Then she died. And then we celebrated a beautiful funeral. Not because I celebrated it, but because this is a family of faith and people's you know, when people have faith and they come to church, it doesn't matter if it is a baptism or a funeral, they are all just beautiful. 
we celebrated the funeral. My friend still died. She didn't get any better. She died. We celebrated the funeral. I went back to El Paso, uh, I mean, to San Antonio. When I went back, you bet sure, I made sure that I put some gas before I took off. My friend still passed away. But the fact that I could get there, thanks to that gas station that came out of nowhere, because I have never seen that. I now fly, right? I don't drive. Uh, it's too scary to drive over there. Things may not change out there, but we still replug. We still regain our energy. That's what the Lord does. That's exactly what the Lord does during this season. Things may not change in your life. You are still looking for that thing that is going to make you happy. You are still preparing a wedding. I saw a couple that are still preparing a wedding, and it's probably going to get more hectic the closer it gets. You are still fighting for that um, um, position in the employment scale. You are still reading that book that you don't understand. If you are like me, if you don't like math, you are still struggling with those numbers. Things may not change out there, but things change out here because we replug into the Easter season and we remember that there is hope. We remember that there is joy. We remember that in the midst of trials, there is the certainty and the peace to know that God walk with us. Amen. Happy Easter. Amen. They don't seem to get it. Happy Easter. I hope that you take truly the opportunity not only to attend in this beautiful Mass, it is so good to have you here today, but to make the conscientious decision to replug into the Easter, to replug into hope, to replug into mercy, to replug into joy, to replug into peace. Whatever you may need this day, whatever you may need during this season, just replug because God is ready to give us the blessings that we need to walk this journey. He for sure knows that this journey is tough. See how they thought he ended? He thought they ended on a cross, but it is the, the celebration of the resurrection that makes us plug and replug and replug once and again, knowing that he is the one that gives us hope. Amen. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Replug. Even if things don't change out there, the Lord wants to change us from within. Since we have already professed our faith at the beginning of Mass, let us offer our prayers and intentions to the Lord for all our needs. It took you by surprise, huh? It happens during Easter. Let us pray for the whole church, for ourselves. Reborn in the risen Lord, that we may continually bear witness to the effect of the resurrection on our lives, given us and the world joy, hope, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the risen Lord may move the hearts of all those who are in conflict with one another bringing peace and reconciliation among all God's children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the newest members of the church, that the good work the Lord has begun in them may continue to bear fruit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our donors, ministries, families, children, the elderly, and the unemployed. 
that the Lord will see to their every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for our intentions and the intentions of about 80 families that celebrate this joyful mass with us. Let us ask uh, the Lord for the opportunity to, re uh, thank God for the opportunity to replug into this resurrection, which brings blessings into our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, Let us pray for vocations. Jesus, our Savior, your sacred heart felt compassion when you looked upon the crowd and saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. We know that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So we ask you, the master of the harvest, to send out more laborers. Open my heart and the hearts of my brothers and sisters to your will. Raise up joyful young men and women who are open to grow in holiness and devotion and spend themselves for your people in the Diocese of Austin as nuns, sisters, monks, brothers, friars, permanent deacons and priests. May no one in your flock, one at the price of your blood, be without a shepherd to guide them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to take a moment to prepare our offerings before we walk uh, towards the altar. Father, as we thank you uh, for this day and for this beautiful Easter season, uh, for giving us the opportunity to replug into Jesus and into our belief in his resurrection, we ask that you please take from us the offerings that we brought to you today. Please accept them and bless them through Christ our Lord. accept these offerings that uh, were uh, brought to your altar 
with joy and also with sacrifice and bless him through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For Christ is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, Christ has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angels' hosts, angelic hosts, sing it together the unending hymn of your glorious without end, they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and the minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Joe, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and the sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we there to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. If you cannot receive Holy Communion today, please say this prayer with me. <clears throat> My Jesus, I, <coughs> I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Uh, we would like to welcome those of you who, even near or far, wherever you may come from, that you are visiting San Jose. If you are not a member of our community, would you please stand so that we may recognize you? That's great. Let's give him all a big hand. That's great. Fabulous. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. Come back and see us, okay? Come back and see us. And also, um, just a friendly reminder that we have a conference in Spanish for those of you who are bilingual in Spanish. Uh, the Conference of Women will be this April 20th and the tickets are already on sale. If you would like to participate, you go get your ticket. That will be a wonderful thing to do. And last but never least, we would like to bless religious items. If you have candles, rosaries, or other things that you would like to have blessed, please stand. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, O Lord. You are the fount and source of every blessing, and you look with delight upon the devout practices of your children. Draw near, we pray, on these your servants, and as they use these symbols of their faith and devotion, grant that they may also strive to be transformed into the likeness of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I think we have a gift. I know we have a gift for you. I think it's only at the front doors because I don't see tables here on the sides. But please do me a favor and get uh, a copy of this uh, book called The Beautiful Eucharist. Beautiful Eucharist by Matthew Kelly and the Dynamic Parish team. And um, just go get a book. It's, it's an Easter gift. And if you have a friend that likes to read, just get a copy for him or her. The copy should be available also in Spanish, but this one is in English. Of course, just make sure that you, you, you read it English because it's the same exact thing except for the language, okay? And happy Easter to you. You're getting it little by little. That's great. And uh, one more thing we would like to say. Uh, um, a happy Easter from all of us who work here and the deacons who do not work here but always support us and our pre-deacon here that always support our liturgies and our activities, our liturgical events with so much dedication. There is a lot of, uh, a lot of volunteers that make these, these liturgies possible. So thank you to each and all of them. And from all of us who work here at San Jose and our deacons, we wish you a very, very blessed Easter day and season. The Lord is risen. I'm trying to find my page. So, the Lord is risen. I found my page. The Lord be with you. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. <clears throat> May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. May you who have already reasoned with Christ to, bapt to in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended, go in peace, alleluia. 
Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I forgot to mention that uh, uh, last night at the Easter Vigil, uh, we, have, uh, we had five new members of our community who became Catholic by baptism, and we had two, hmm, how do you call it? Um, two converts to Catholicism. So we have one of them, and that is Stephen. What is Steve? I don't see him. Okay, Stephen is there, and Angel is here. Angel, raise your hand. Let's give him all a big hand, and to all who received the sacraments last night. God bless you. We didn't hear from young people. Did you lie to me? So I want to hear from young people. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. You lied to me. They don't, they don't answer that well. Maybe they are shy. Come on, young people. The Lord is risen. No gap. You got it. <laughs> Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. Qui acque meruisti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dexit, alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deo, Alleluia. And may the souls of our faithfully departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. 